Episode 281. You've already caused harm to me. How are you going to make it up? Hearing that, David was immediately unhappy. April is really stone-hearted. My son is so nice to her, yet she treated him so cruelly for nothing but some evidence. Olive laughed. That's not some ordinary evidence. That evidence can save her father. Anyone would fall into a dilemma for that. Director, Young Master is not an unreasonable person. If you tell him now, he might rebuke you. But if he were to find out by himself, there would be serious trouble. David pulled a long face. As a director, how could he ever be afraid of a rebuke from his son? That would be seriously embarrassing. However, he had already lost his wife. If he lost his son and daughter too, he would really be in trouble. He didn't like Aaron, but after all, he was his son. At last, Olive added, Most importantly, Esma was using you. She's breaking the relationship between you and your son. Are you going to let her do that? Of course not. Mentioning Esma, David was so angry. Days ago, he called and asked her if she had read the file, and she said no. She faked it so well that he believed her. However, it turned out that she had been fooling him. Call Aaron right now. Ask him where he is and tell him to come here. If he refuses, tell him that you know why April broke up with him. David ordered. Yes, sir. Olive turned and called Aaron. After ending the call, she said, Young Master said that he'll be on his way once I told him that it's about April. He'll be here in 40 minutes. David nodded, then subconsciously touched his own face. He remembered how Aaron hit him eight years ago. That boy's fists were as heavy as hammers. Not long ago, he was punched by Lewis. His injuries had just healed. Thinking about that pain, he started feeling uncomfortable. A while later, he said to Olive, Go and bring me a helmet. Olive was a little speechless. I'll also wear a military padded coat. David stood up. With the coat and the helmet, he wouldn't suffer too much pain even if his son hit him. 45 minutes later, Aaron quickly walked over. At first sight, he saw David pacing in the living room, wearing a helmet and a military padded coat. It was over 20 degrees Celsius. Seeing his father dressed like that, he was astounded. Why are you wearing that? Did you do something awful? Are you afraid that I might kick your ass? Standing beside David, Olive nearly burst out in laughter. Aaron really knew his father well. What are you talking about? I was reorganizing the storeroom just now. I found these and decided to try them on. Surprisingly, they still fit. David gave him a threatening glance. Finding that Aaron's clothes were wet, he paused for a second and asked, Have you been standing in the rain at April's downstairs every day? Aaron got impatient. Just tell me why she broke up with me. David cleared his throat and then gave Olive a signal with his eyes. Olive immediately started talking. Miss Eisenberg broke up with you because Esma threatened her. Esma is holding some important evidence that can clear Kenneth's name. Miss Eisenberg chose to leave you because of her father. Esma? Aaron instantly tightened his body. He stared straight at Olive and asked, what important evidence? Rachel had something. Olive glanced at Aaron, then continued. I guess you find out about that too. Aaron nodded. Didn't Isaac take that thing? How did it fall into Esma's hands? Isn't she just an ordinary woman? Has someone else been helping her? Who could be capable enough to find that evidence before me? David snorted and said, She's with Peter, the CEO of Panache Holdings. Peter is quite rich, Aaron nodded. But I started the investigation before the new year. Esma didn't even know April then. It's not possible that he found the evidence so quickly. Because... David closed his eyes and said, I've been looking into Kenneth's case before the new year too. Esma was in my office previously and I think she must have seen the documents. Aaron was silently glaring at him. A wave of fury overcame him. The whole time, his own father was the cause of all this. He was the reason why April broke up with him. And he was the reason behind his agony these past few days. He was the reason why April said so many hurtful things to him. He was the reason why he stood in the rain like a fool. 
Fury made him throw punches like a madman. David backed away instinctively and he raised one hand. I didn't expect this to happen. I thought something wasn't right that day when you came to look for me. I asked Olive to look into the matter immediately. Esma is too manipulative. Look, I'm telling you the truth right after I found out about what happened. After all, you're still my son. I won't let anyone bully you. How dare you? Aaron's eyes widened in anger. I was still boggled as to how Esma managed to obtain the evidence before me. It was you! Why did you look into Kenneth? Were you planning to threaten her just like Esma did? Nonsense! David said awkwardly. You're with a random girl. Isn't it normal for a father to find out about his son's partner? I just found out about her dad coincidentally. Yeah, you've come a long way with your investigations. Aaron mocked him. You even found out about Rachel. You're even more thorough than me. David's lower lip quivered, but he was at a loss for what to say. He was damned that his son knew him so well. That's right. I was planning to do that in the beginning, but I didn't. I told Olive to destroy the documents. You can ask Olive if you don't believe me. David looked over at Olive. I don't need to ask Olive. Aaron's expression was grim. You are really looking out for me, aren't you? You should have given me the documents when you got them in the first place. You knew I'd be much slower than you. All of this wouldn't have happened if you had given them to me. Don't be too impudent. You didn't put in a single good word for me when your mother divorced me. David refuted. You deserved it. Aaron was shaking all over. I wanted to ask you anyway, if you really cared about my mother. Why did you let Esma into your office when she came over to visit you? What are you doing? Did you take pity on her? Or were you planning to rekindle your old love now that you've divorced my mother? Don't be ridiculous. It was all because of Jenica's injury. Do you know how guilty I felt about the fact that she can never be a mother? I wanted to talk to Esma about the arranged marriage. David supported his heavy head. You should blame Esma for what happened. Leave me alone. I won't leave you alone. Why are you all layered up and wearing a helmet? Aaron kicked the stool in front of him forcefully. You knew that you were going to get beat up. David pointed at him, shaking his finger. You will be punished by the heavens for hitting your father. Step by step, Aaron approached him with a cold face. The last time he wanted to punch his father so much was when he had hurt Caitlin. Young master! Olive hurriedly stood before David and said, Director had informed me once he found out the truth. He really does not want you to get hurt. I'm sorry. You have already caused harm to me. Tell me, how are you going to make it up to me? Aaron turned to avoid Olive. His entire body still radiated anger. Make it up? David paused for a second. Yes. Aaron pressed his fist and cracked his joints. We can do a little father and son battle. Didn't you like that the most when I was little? Or you can give April that jade pendant that was passed down from our ancestors. Then I won't battle you. David's face turned dark with anger. Your great grandmother gave me that jade pendant. It's worth over 10 million. You want me to give it to her? Are you out of your mind? Aaron snorted and said, <laughs> It's so cheap. How dare you even mention it? If it was not for my great grandmother, I wouldn't even bother to ask you for it. You! You! David trembled. He could not make 10 million, not even if he worked hard all his life. It seems that you don't want to give her the pendant, so we're going to do the battle. Let's see if you have lagged behind during these past years. Since you're wearing a helmet and this thick coat, I'll have to attack you in the face. Aaron said, pushing David away. David was rather strong, yet Aaron had easily pushed him away. David did not want to fight him. When he was around 20, he was trained well in the special forces. Later on, he retired, but he still kept working out every single day. David was over 50 years old now and was going to retire soon. How could he possibly be a match for a son? Earlier, he had been beaten by Lewis, and the pain lasted for a couple of days. Thinking about that, he shrank back a little. So he said, All right, since you insist on marrying April and refuse to listen to anything I've said, I have no other choice. As long as she becomes my daughter-in-law, I'll give her the jade pendant. Aaron stopped and said to him coldly, 
don't forget what you just said. David was so upset. I must have owed you a debt in the previous life and in this life. You became my son to claim it. Tell me, how are you going to deal with Esma? It's reasonable for you to teach her a lesson and give her some punishment. But still, think about Jenica's feelings. I've confirmed that Jenica does not know about this. Maybe you should talk to her, ask her to tell her mother to stop. Also, she should break up with that married man. Have you found where she hid that evidence? Aaron asked with a frown. I was only trying to find out what was happening. I couldn't have looked under her bed in the beginning. She hid that evidence long ago. How am I supposed to know where it is? Said David impatiently. Stay out of this. I have my own plan. Also, don't tell anyone about this. Not even April. After saying that, Aaron turned and left. By the door, he stopped, turned around, and said, If you can always be like this, I won't feel annoyed every time I see you. After saying that, he left with big strides. David paused for a second, then pointed at the door and cursed. That little bastard! How dare he say that I'm annoying! I didn't even say that to him. Director, aren't you feeling hot? Olive asked with a smile. Hearing that, David realized that his hair and back were soaked with sweat. Episode 282 She Sold April to Be a Godmother Aaron drove away from the house. He felt exhilarated. Jenica still liked him. She said all those hurtful things just to traumatize him. That stupid woman. That idiot. How could she allow Esma to threaten her and leave him like that? Was he not trustworthy enough? Or was he someone that could be readily sacrificed to save Kenneth? Didn't he take up 80% of her heart? The more he thought about it, the more upset he got. He was angry, grieving, and sorry for himself. She had hurt him. She would not be forgiven so easily. The more he thought about it, the angrier he got. When he entered the city, he called Winnie immediately. Mr. Bennett, do you need anything? I'm in a guitar lesson. Winnie whispered over the phone. I need to see you now. Give me your address, Aaron said coldly. If you don't come out to meet me, I will make it so that your guitar skills won't be of any use. Don't tell April about this either, Aaron warned her. Winnie had no choice but to tell him where her training center was. The place was far from where he was, yet he arrived at the building within half an hour. Winnie was waiting for him by the roadside. When she saw his car pull up, she was a little scared, but she still got in the passenger seat. Before she could sit down, Aaron hollered at her. Who said you could sit there? That seat is for my woman. Go sit in the back. Fine, you win, Winnie thought. She shut the door and sat in the back. She wanted to run when she saw how cold Aaron's expression was. Even though he was a good catch, she was still impressed at how April could stand all his antics. Mr. Bennett, if you want me to convince April to get back together with you, I can't help you there. It's your own relationship problem. Serves you right for not allowing me to taste a single bite of your bento box, Winnie thought to herself. No, I'm here to ask you about some things. Aaron turned to look at her. You were best friends with April. You should know about Esma threatening her. Winnie's eyes nearly popped out of their sockets. Mr. Bennett, you've already found out? I knew it. Aaron chuckled and pounded his fist into the steering wheel. How dare you, Esma? How dare you interfere with my relationship? She thinks that she can do whatever she pleases after getting involved with a rich old man. Winnie was shuddering in fear. It was best for her to keep quiet. Let me ask you, what else do you know? Aaron frowned. How did Esma threaten her? Tell me the exact details. Winnie decided to tell him everything, since he had figured it out anyway. She threatened April and she said she had to leave you. She made it clear that she must hurt you deeply. She told April to do things that would make you detest and hate her. Things that you would never forgive her for. Then she would give April the evidence after three months. She wanted you to see her in bed with another man at first, but April rejected her proposal. Her compromise was to use Ryan to antagonize you. We didn't expect you to continue chasing her so relentlessly. April's in a difficult position now. That fool! Why didn't she tell me this? Aaron gritted his teeth. Doesn't she trust me at all? We could have solved this together. She said... Winnie looked at him helplessly. 
She said she wanted to tell you about it and put on an act in front of Esma, but your acting was too flamboyant and unbelievable. Exaggerate? How dare she say that? Why would he exaggerate? Aaron's chest heaved. He was so angry. He wasn't trained in acting, but there was nothing in the world that he couldn't do, as long as he seriously wanted to do it. It was nothing but acting. How could it be too hard for him? She not only didn't distrust him, but also doubted his ability. I see. She has some big misunderstandings about me. Aaron abruptly sneered and said, It's time for me to show her my real abilities. Don't. Winnie gave a start. Your exaggerated way of acting is certainly going to ruin the whole plan, she thought. What do you mean? Do you think I'm exaggerating too? Aaron questioned her with a grim face. No, no, Winnie stuttered. Mr. Bennett, I think the world owes you an Oscar award. Aaron snorted and continued. What else did she say? Is she simply going to hurt me and trample upon my feelings like this? Does she think that my heart is made of iron? Did she think that when she got the evidence and came back to me, I'd be moved and accept her again? Isn't she thinking too highly of herself? No matter what the reason she has, she has already hurt me. Winnie hurriedly nodded and said, You're right. So April said that she'd try her best to get pregnant before she broke up with you. And when she got the evidence, she'd go back to you with a pregnant belly. You may give up on her, but not the baby. Did she really say that? Aaron's eyes glowed. Yes. Winnie prayed silently. April, please don't blame me for telling Mr. Bennett the whole truth. He already knew, so if I didn't make it clear, he'd bear a grudge. I'm surprised. Aaron raised an eyebrow, thought for a moment, then shook his head with a smile. She even came up with such a shameless plan. She's really trying hard. She's such a scheming girl. No wonder I fell into her trap, he thought. Now I see why she was so passionate in bed those few days. It turned out she was trying to get pregnant. Is she pregnant now? He asked. Winnie was speechless. This is only the third day since she broke up with you. How could it be so fast? I don't think so. Earlier she told me that those few days were her safe period, so it's not likely to happen. Aaron immediately fell into regret. He thought he was going to be a father. He wanted so much to have a little girl who was as adorable and silly as April. He had no such feelings before he had a girlfriend. Now he had a girlfriend, and he was going to be 30 soon. He was not a boy anymore. Many of his army friends had more than one child now. As he fell into silence, Winnie gathered her courage and said, Mr. Bennett, since you know the truth now, maybe you should tell April. She's been quite miserable these days. Esma called her and threatened her again. She wanted her to be crueler to you, but she couldn't bear doing it. Watching you showering in the rain every day downstairs, she couldn't even eat. She deserves it said Aaron. Don't tell her about this for now. Since she likes acting, I'll cooperate. Please don't, Winnie thought. You're really not good at that. Don't worry, I won't go and see her again. She can focus on Esma now, Aaron said. I don't know where she hid that evidence, indeed. Since she likes playing games, I'll play with her. The mantis stalks the cicada, unaware of the oriole is behind it. In three months, I'll let her know what it means. Mr. Bennett, what are you going to do? Winnie was a little worried. I don't trust April's acting skills, so I can only cooperate with her and pretend not to know anything. Aaron gave her a proud glance. Was it really time to seek personal revenge? Winnie sympathized with April. If you tell her anything, I will put a halt on your career. Aaron threatened her. Winnie couldn't help but say, Mr. Bennett, do you think you can threaten me with my career whenever you please? April's my friend, after all. Between my career and my friend, I will always choose my friend. Oh, really? Aaron chuckled. If you don't listen to me, I will sow discord between the two of you when we marry in the future. I will be her husband and live under the same roof as her, after all. Do you think your friendship will still be intact then? You can decide for yourself. Winnie and held sharply. How could there be anyone like him? Absolutely shameless. Tell me then, Mr. Bennett, what do you want me to do? Winnie was afraid of what he could do. Aaron chuckled. Since you wanted to have my babies, I'll let her have them. I quite like the idea of that. He was the one who wanted to marry and have children in the first place. April thought she was still too young to be a mother. She was planning to wait for another three to four years before she considered it. 
Although he thought it was a little late, he was going to be over 30 years old then. However, he was willing to respect her decision. She was so young, after all. Since she wanted to have his children out of guilt, he was happy to let her. The sooner he became a dad, the sooner they could get married as well. That would save him the worry of her running away. He was really taken aback this time. He was worried she would break up with him over something else. Perhaps Kenneth might disapprove of him when he was released, or her brother might oppose their marriage too. Things were unpredictable. It would be best for her to carry his child for now. It was a lesson for her too, after treating him so cruelly. Mr. Bennett, I think you're being a little immoral here. Winnie held back her laughter. She hadn't seen this coming at all. I'm not forcing her to have my child, Aaron said. She wanted to do so herself. I'm just allowing her to do what she wants to do. Relax, her career won't be affected. I'll definitely hire a nanny after she delivers. Don't you want to be a godmom? Aaron prodded her after she was silent for a while. If you cooperate with me, I will let you be the godmother of my child. My child will probably be a national political leader of some sort. Think about it. It's worth it for you. Winnie rolled her eyes. He hadn't even donated a sperm yet, and he was already so sure that his child would become a national leader. Where did his confidence come from? She did love children, though. She had never been a godmother before, but it sounded like a lot of fun. All right. You promise that you'll make me the godmom, right? Yup. Get out. Aaron gestured towards the car door. Winnie clambered out of the car in a daze. She only thought about what she just promised after the car pulled away. She sold April to be a godmother. She looked at her apartment full of guilt. She was uncomfortable when she saw April, but she had to pull her act together. Why didn't I see Mr. Bennett just now? April was bothered too. Erin had left after 12 o'clock that day. She sighed. She felt uneasy and dejected. He probably gave up on her. It had been raining all day and she hadn't shown him any affection or concern. He couldn't possibly wait for her for the rest of his life. Episode 283 You Have a Baby? Yesterday, he said in front of so many people at school that he would look at her and wait for her, whether she wanted it or not. It had only been two days since she had broken up with him. Wasn't he giving up too easily? What are you thinking? Seeing her upset expression, Winnie asked with concern, Aren't you supposed to be happy? I should be happy, but I also feel that he gave up on me too easily, April said, disappointed. Am I a little self-contradictory? What on earth do you want? Winnie felt speechless. You might fall into Mr. Bennett's trap like this. No matter what, this is the best result for now. Just get your dad out of prison first. Will I have lost him by the time dad gets out? April started to have some unpleasant thoughts. He's a weird person indeed, but he's also rich and capable and handsome. Other people will fall in love with him. There are too many crazy girls these days. That's possible, said Winnie. The world of rich people is very complicated. They can have new girlfriends every three months or even three days. Hearing that, April was entirely shrouded by the frustrating atmosphere. Winnie glanced at her with pity, then went to the kitchen to make dinner. April didn't eat much. The next day, no one gave her flowers on her way to school and no broadcast interrupted class. In the cafeteria, the staff gave her regular meals, the same as what all the other students had. There were no well-cooked pork ribs or chicken wings. April had no appetite at all. The few girls sitting behind her were whispering to each other. Their voices were loud enough for April to hear clearly. That's April, right? Yeah, yeah, that's her. She's pretty indeed but not so pretty that he has to marry her. Does she really need to act like that? She even turned down a nice man like Mr. Bennett. You're right. I heard that she dumped him. Mr. Bennett wooed her in public, yet she barely responded. Maybe she thinks that he's in love too deeply with her, but now he's stopped coming to the school. She should have seized that rich and handsome guy, but now she's ruined it. 
I heard that she's pretty close with Ryan. She broke up with Mr. Bennett because of him. I have to say that even though Ryan is popular, he's not as mature and rich as Mr. Bennett. After all, I can't believe that there's a woman in the world who would turn down a perfect man like Mr. Bennett. The more she listened, the more anxious April felt. No wonder Aaron was so narcissistic. He was turned narcissistic by those ignorant girls. She put down her chopsticks and asked Winnie, who was eating her food, Do you think Esma will believe me? I mean, we broke up quite easily. Winnie raised her head, glanced at her listless face, and responded, If you stay this way, I think she will believe you. What way? Like a soulless person. You are distracted, your eyes are unfocused, and you don't even eat your favorite food. Whitney picked up a piece of potato from her plate while speaking. April touched her own face, wondering if she really looked that bad. Think whatever you want, because you'll soon be laughed at by the whole school, said Winnie with no mercy. April couldn't even swallow one grain of rice. In the next few days, April found that she had really become like a punchline at school. Wherever she went, people pointed fingers at her. What made her feel sadder was that Aaron seemed to have disappeared from the world without leaving even a trace. Caitlin had called her and asked what happened. She felt pretty sorry for the fact that April wasn't going to become her daughter-in-law. However, she had been through the same and understood that two people going on and off was a normal thing. Even some married couples had to divorce in the end, not to mention the people in mere relationships. After all, April was still young. Sylvia went to school to see April in person and asked her, April, my brother said that you two have broken up. What happened? Didn't you accept his proposal? Did he say that? April felt so bitter. Aaron seemed to have agreed to break up with her. Yeah, he said that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't make you change your mind, so he gave up, said Sylvia with discontent. How could he just give up? He should spend at least one year or even half a year to try to win you back. April really wanted to nod to agree. She was touched by what he had said that day through the broadcast in school. But in the end, he gave up so easily. However, she still said, We are really not perfect matches for each other. So why did you sleep together? Asked Sylvia grumpily. My brother has taken advantage of you, but that's not important. What's important is, did my brother give you a good sum of money? He should make good arrangements for his ex-girlfriend. He should buy you an apartment or a house and make arrangements for the rest of your life. It's good that you broke up with him. You'll get nothing good from him anyway. <clears throat> April winced awkwardly. She thought that Sylvia would try to make peace between them, but to her surprise, we were in a normal relationship. It was a normal thing for us to sleep with each other. It's also normal for us to break up because we're not good matches for each other. No one suffered losses. If what you said just now was the rule, no guy would have the courage to start a relationship. April laughed. You're right. Sylvia sighed, feeling very upset. I wanted you to be my sister-in-law, but I know that my brother isn't a good guy, so I can't force you. I'm really worried that my brother might be obsessed with some complicated woman someday and that she might cast her greedy eyes on my money and property like those women in TV series. April didn't know what to say. Her future sister-in-law did have lots of money and property. How awful do you think your brother is? She wondered. Don't worry, I'll find you a good man. Sylvia patted her on the shoulder. April couldn't help but ask, didn't your brother tell you why we broke up? Sylvia paused for a second, then soon figured it out. You didn't fall in love with another guy, did you? April stayed silent. Police officers do think faster than others, she thought. Sylvia looked at her, staying silent as well. As April was expecting her blame, Sylvia opened her mouth, sighed, and said, That's reasonable. After spending time with someone like my brother, you really will find that there are so many good men out there. April honestly didn't know how to respond. Relax, I'm not an unreasonable person. I grew up with him and sometimes I even wanted to kill him with a broom, said Sylvia. Even dog poop is less annoying than he is. The corners of April's mouth twitched. 
in fact, he's not that bad. I don't know. But my mother doesn't like him either. She always says that she might have done something awful in her previous life, so she had him as a punishment in this life. Sylvia smiled bitterly. I can only say that he has a good heart, but he didn't treat me, his sister, as a precious princess and didn't treat my mom like a queen. Shouldn't guys do that? April was stunned. Mother and daughter had high expectations. Sylvia explained, Look, I'm only a sister. If I marry the wrong guy, I have to rely on my brother to dote on me. My mother, too, after divorcing my dad, has had to rely on her son to dote on her. But my brother is like a block of ice. No fun at all. April couldn't help but ask, How are things between you and Jeremy? Sylvia's expression froze. We broke up a long time ago. He went back to the military. My dad told me that he will be transferred back in the summer this year. But I've given up hope. He hasn't contacted me after so long. He would have called if he really cared. Sometimes relationships are really worthless. Sometimes it's all talk and no action. You get it. Don't trust what men say. You have to assess their actions. April sighed. She understood that although Sylvia said that she had gotten over him, she still needed more time to heal and recover. Don't think too much about it. You'll find the one for you. April comforted her. Yeah, we'll both find our one. Sylvia smiled. Although you broke up with my brother, it won't affect our friendship, right? Right. April smiled and nodded. It was a good arrangement. She originally thought that Sylvia would dislike her after this. She always found Sylvia likable, and she didn't want to lose her as a friend. At the Splingo Corporation, Richard was displeased with the fact that he had an overwhelming load of work to get done in the office. Previously, Aaron had been camping at April's and not turning up to work at all. More recently, he was still passing on his responsibilities to Richard, even though he had been showing up for work. Richard had a headache after reading all the documents piled up on his desk. He stood up and took the elevator up to the CEO's office. Without knocking on the door, he barged into Aaron's office. Aaron was idly reading a book on his cushy window couch when he walked in. He looked relaxed with his legs crossed. Aaron said grumpily when he barged in unannounced, What are you doing here? You should be doing work downstairs. How dare you? The economics forum is about to happen and you have deserted all your responsibilities and left me to handle all of the work. I'm not the one who graduated with an economics degree. Richard pulled on his hair. I've lost so much hair the past couple of days. I'm going to be bald at this rate. If you don't know economics, you can ask your subordinates. Aaron replied as he continued reading his book. Yeah, I should go on stage and read someone else's script too, shouldn't I? It will make us look bad if work gets out. Anyway, I'm not going to represent our company at the forum. You go instead, Richard said angrily as he snatched the book out of his hands. When he saw the title of the book, he was shocked. Baby manual? You have a baby? Soon. Aaron snatched the book back and grinned at him. Richard felt his forehead for any temperature. Are you ill? You just broke up with April. Where's your baby going to come from? Can't I still have a baby? Aaron raised his eyebrows. April's already pregnant? Stay out of this. Just know that I'm going to be a dad soon. Don't tell anyone that, of course. Aaron looked up at him. It's probably going to happen within this year. Get your red packet ready. Richard was still in shock. The world was changing too quickly in front of him. He couldn't keep up. All right, you don't have to work on the forum anymore. I will go myself. Aaron said casually. You don't need a script. Aaron looked at him with disdain. I've done the speech every single year and I've never needed a script. People believe anything successful, people tell them. I could say anything and they would be impressed with me. Episode 284 Stop Peeping at Him Obsessively Okay, you won. I'll tell someone to book you the tickets. It'll take place in New Jersey this time, and you need to be there for three days, Richard said. There are lots of young and talented people in the finance world now. Our company needs new blood. We need brave and creative people. Just look around. All right. 
Aaron nodded, then lowered his head and continued reading. Seeing his serious face, Richard sighed, then walked out the door. When passing by Marvin's desk, he couldn't help but ask, Has your boss been acting like this the whole time? Maybe you should take him to see a shrink. Is he out of his mind? I don't think so. Marvin felt speechless too. His boss, who had been down for a few days, suddenly brought a thick stack of books about pregnancy and babysitting to the company and spent all his spare time reading them. Marvin was extremely surprised when seeing those books, but he didn't dare ask any questions. I don't know what he's thinking. Richard shook his head. At the end of April, April got a call from Simon Game saying that after a series of discussions, the company had decided to have her dub for four of the game's characters, including the lead female role. The company asked her to fly to New Jersey to start working in three days. April wanted to share the great news with Aaron the moment she heard it. However, when she found his phone number on her phone, she realized that they had already broken up. She had no right to share her joy and sadness with him anymore. She put down her phone silently. When Winnie came back, she told her the news. Would you like to go with me? Ben Davis is the game's spokesman. I have asked some people from Simon and they said that he's going to dub for the lead male role, so we'll definitely see each other. Hearing that, Winnie paused slightly, then showed a delightfully surprised look on her face. But soon, that look faded and she said, Never mind, I'm not going. Just go. April tried to persuade her with a soft voice. You're not still mad at him because he didn't help me last time, are you? Winnie curved her lips downwards. That was one of the reasons. He didn't invite me. Why would I go there without an invitation? To surprise him, said April. Seriously, it's not a good thing for you to be away from each other all year round. You need to remind him of your existence. If he really loves you, he'll be thrilled to see you. All right, Winnie thought for a moment then nodded at last. She and Ben Davos were in different situations. It was hard for them to see each other, so she guessed that he wouldn't mind. I heard that Mr. B is also going to New Jersey. He's going to attend the financial summit. What a coincidence. April was a little stunned. Really? How do you know? Haven't you been paying attention to the financial news? The economics forum that is going to take place has attracted so much attention from the industry leaders. Mr. Bay is also invited. I think he's going to go on stage and give a speech. I heard it from my classmates. Winnie smilingly pushed April's shoulders. Will we be on the same plane with him? April got a little excited. She hadn't seen him in half a month. She had never parted from him for such a long time. She missed him so much that she felt uncomfortable every single day. She looked at those old photos they had taken together, but that only made her more upset. She missed him every single day. She wondered if he missed her too. She turned, picked up a grape, and set it while peeling it. There won't be such a coincidence. I doubt that. It might really happen if you want it to. Winnie smiled. You're not going to talk to him. You can just look at him from a distance. But I don't know which flight he'll take. April sighed. It's easy. Winnie took out her phone. For company owners like him, they always take day flights. He's going to the forum tonight. I've got it. He's probably taking the 2.30 flight there. Even though there are earlier flights at 9 and 10 o'clock. Winnie analyzed. April agreed with her. He was most likely on that flight. She couldn't be sure, though, and depended on fate and luck as well. Well, he must be sitting in the first-class cabin. It's so expensive. April was in a dilemma. The tickets will cost $3,000 without any discounts. Winnie rolled her eyes. Didn't the company at Marianne Flanders' party compensate you $3 million? I'm saving that money for my father's lawsuit. I don't know how long the case will drag on, so I can't spend that money. April shook her head. All right, I'll buy it for you, since you're bringing me to see Ben Davos. Winnie was already ordering the tickets on her phone. Sue, you are the best. Don't worry. 
I won't forget about you when I marry and have kids with Aaron. April hugged her friend tightly. Winnie was speechless. You just hurt him so cruelly and you're already talking about marrying him and having his children? Where did your confidence come from? April looked at her awkwardly. Don't tease me. I can still have hope for my future. Forget it. I'll let it go. I'm going to order the tickets. Winnie burst out laughing. Afterward, Winnie texted Aaron discreetly while April wasn't noticing. After three days, the two of them hurried back to the apartment to pack after having lunch in the school cafeteria. When they left the house, April was wearing a denim jacket. However, she had second thoughts when she got to the door and went back in to change into a pair of jeans. Winnie was anxiously looking at her watch. Won't you hurry up? You're not a celebrity. You don't have to bother with airport fashion. April blushed. We might bump into Aaron on the plane. He hasn't seen me in a while. I don't want him to think that I've become uglier. I think you want him to be swept off his feet. Winnie blurted out. I've never seen this pair of jeans before. Did you buy them yesterday? Not only had she bought that pair of jeans, but she also bought a couple of other outfits. Aren't you worried that Mr. Bennett might think you're trying to seduce him when he sees how pretty you look? He might come chasing after you again. Why would Esma give you the evidence then? Winnie added. All right. Should I change back? April was flustered. Forget it. We're running out of time. If we don't leave now, don't even talk about meeting him if we can't catch our flight. Winnie was pulling her along and handed her a pair of shoes. They left the apartment later than expected and there was heavy traffic on their way to the airport. When they finally arrived, it was already the last boarding call. The two of them hurried to the boarding gate and entered the VIP lounge. All first class passengers enjoyed this privilege and there were five or six people sitting in the lounge when they entered. The most eye-catching man among them was Aaron. He was wearing a gray vest and a matching suit, a blue shirt underneath, and a navy blue checkered tie. He was sitting on a chair in a relaxed manner, and he looked regal and composed. His lean body and long legs were obvious and accentuated. April did a double take. She hadn't seen him in such a nice outfit in a while. He was like a body of light catching the attention of everyone in his presence. He looked foreign to her too. The last time she had seen him was when he stood beneath her apartment, drenched like a sad puppy. Now he was chatting with a woman with a cold expression. The woman sitting next to him was Kiara Kell. She was wearing a plaid shirt matched with a high-waisted pair of white trousers and a pair of heels. She had a perfect body shape and a charming presence. Sitting together, she and Aaron somehow looked like the perfect couple. They were talking with low voices. Neither of them noticed April. Watching them, April had such a sour feeling in her heart. She felt as if she were chewing a super sour berry, which made her very uncomfortable. She knew Kira as the legal advisor of Aaron's company. Did he need to bring a lawyer to attend a high-end forum? Winnie glanced at her, then took the initiative to greet Aaron. Mr. Bay, what a small world. Are you going on a business trip too? Hearing her, Aaron raised his head, glanced coldly at her in April, then turned back to keep talking to Kira. Marvin, who sat beside him, said, Winnie, your friend has already broken up with Mr. Bay, so you two are strangers to him now. Please do not disturb him. Winnie was a little speechless. He's pretty good at acting, she thought. April spent two seconds staring at Aaron, then turned walked to the last row of the VIP departure room and found herself a seat. Winnie hurriedly followed behind her and asked, Are you okay? Sure. I saw this day coming the day we broke up. April took out her phone, then lowered her head to play a game. However, Winnie found that she completely messed up the game. The departure room was quiet. Only Aaron and Kira's conversation, which included all sorts of terminology, could be heard. Occasionally, Kira would burst out in laughter. April could see nothing but Kiara smiling sweetly at Aaron. She felt extremely uncomfortable. Kiara herself had admitted that she was fond of Aaron. Was she trying to grasp the chance and approach him now? She promised April she would help her with her father's case, but did not promise that she wouldn't go after Aaron. There were many immoral people nowadays. 
While playing the game, April couldn't help but recall the last time she and Aaron were at the airport together. Back then, they couldn't leave each other's side. When she played the game, he would sit by her side and criticize her poor skills and slow reactions. At that time, she felt annoyed by him, but now anything was precious to her. Winnie pushed her and whispered, Stop peeping at him obsessively. You're making a fool of yourself. I'm not. April argued awkwardly. Winnie snorted. After sitting there and waiting for about 10 minutes, the airport staff reminded the first class passengers to board early. There weren't many first class passengers, so when boarding, April tried her best to fall behind. Her seat was located in the first row and coincidentally, Aaron and Kiara sat behind her. As the plane started flying stably, April couldn't bear listening to their conversation, so she stood up and headed to the bathroom. When coming out, she saw Kiara walking over. April, what a coincidence. Kiara greeted her, smiling. How are things going with Esma? She said three months from now. April forced herself to smile. Good, I hope she won't break her promise. Kira opened the bathroom door. April turned back and said, Miss Kel, you and Aaron... Episode 285 Was Winnie able to take control of this man with her gentle spirit? Kira smiled as she reminded her, you guys already broke up. You shouldn't call him Aaron anymore. April frowned. Kiera was still taking on her father's case after this, so she shouldn't offend her. Lawyer Kel, I've told you why I was breaking up with him. No matter the reason, you've already broken up. Kiera interrupted her. You know that I like him. This is the lowest moment in his life. It's my chance to gain his affection. Don't worry, I will still take on your case like a professional. April had nothing to say. Will you adhere to my request to tell him the truth after some time? Will you still cooperate with me? I will tell him, but I don't know about forgiveness. It's up to him whether he chooses to forgive you or not, but I'll be trying my hardest during this time anyway. Kira tossed her silky hair and walked towards the washroom. April felt anger boil within her. When she walked back to her seat, she realized that Aaron was already sound asleep. With his eyes shut, his skin was radiant and his nose was sharp. He looked extremely handsome. She could stare at him all day long. But she forced herself to look away. Winnie whispered to her, did you notice that the flight attendants have been walking around where Mr. Bennett is sitting quite frequently? April noticed it, of course. There were only two flight attendants in the first class cabin. They were walking around a lot. He was charming everywhere he went. When their meal was served, Aaron got double the portion of fruit. He couldn't finish all of it, so he gave the rest to Kiera. April was frustrated. In the past, she would be the one finishing his extra food. The two-hour flight was torture for her. They all bumped into each other again at baggage claim. Aaron bent over to help Kiara with her luggage. Since April was staying in New Jersey for over a week, she had a large suitcase with her. She collected her luggage by herself and hurled Winnie's luggage with her other hand. Kiara was carrying a small handbag when she said, surprised, you're so strong, April. Before April could reply, Aaron said, She is quite strong. She practically doesn't need a man in her life. Let's go. Aaron didn't even look her way as he walked away gracefully with his hand in his pocket. Marvin was carrying Kira's small suitcase. Goodbye. Kira waved as she quickly caught up with Aaron. April felt like her heart had been smashed into pieces. It's all right. I need you in my life. Winnie comforted her. April didn't reply. She didn't want to be needed by another woman. When they walked to the entrance of the airport, they bumped into Aaron yet again. A long Rolls Royce was parked in front of them and the chauffeur was loading up the luggage. 
The party of three took their seats in the car and the car pulled away. It was quite a sight to behold. Winnie remarked, Damn, they have a luxury car to pick them up. April, where is our driver? April said grumpily, I'm not a superstar. There isn't a pickup car. Let's go take the metro. After 10 minutes, they were squeezed together on the metro and April was despondent. Winnie kept comforting her. It's all right. It's nothing but taking the metro. We always took the metro before. I'm not famous now. When I become a star, I'll give you a private car and a full-time driver wherever you go. Thank you. April held her arm. She was the only one who was able to comfort her right now. But will Kira really steal Mr. Bennett away? Winnie said with concern. April was already worrying about that. Hearing what Winnie said, she felt even more uneasy. But still, she said, We've only been broken up for a few days. If he fell in love with someone else so easily, I, I think I can give up on him too, because it means he didn't love me enough. You're right, though. Winnie nodded. April opened her mouth. What do you mean by, you're right? Can't you say something else to make me feel better? She thought, you're making me feel worse. Simon had booked a hotel for them. They spent one and a half hours traveling from the airport to the hotel via subway. When arriving at the hotel, both of them were starved. They didn't want to go out to eat, so they ordered food online. After filling their stomachs, they rested until 8 o'clock. Then, Winnie dragged April out of the hotel to search for delicious food. April was in low spirits. From time to time, she looked around. Winnie could tell what she was thinking. New Jersey is a huge city. You can't run into him just that easily. Also, the economics forum is taking place tonight. April felt depressed. Winnie was right. The forum that he was attending made her feel that there was a large distance between him and her now. That night, after a shower, April laid on her bed searching for news about the economics forum on her phone. The network was very advanced now. The forum had just ended, but relevant pictures could already be found online, especially that full video of Aaron's speech. He stood straight on that stage without even a draft. His accent was so perfect, and his speech was so smooth, without repeated content and words. The media compared him to an illuminate, describing him as the youngest financer and investor in the industry, and as a brave, wise, and far-sighted man. April knew nothing about finance, but she too found every single word he said so convincing. His speech lasted for 15 minutes. She watched it all. At last, he stood in line with a group of financers to take a picture. And still, he looked so outstanding. Many people say that men shimmered with charm when they were working. Aaron was not an exception. At that moment, April almost forgot that he was a freak in private. On the contrary, she was a little proud because she had slept with that charming man. That was really worth living. The next morning, Winnie rested at the hotel while April got up very early. She needed to go to Simon for a meeting. Does Ben know that you're here? I didn't tell him. Winnie shook her head. I guess I'll see him at the meeting today. I'll see if I can find a good chance to talk to him. April got dressed, said goodbye to Winnie, and then left. Simon Game was only about a 10 minute walk from the hotel. When she arrived, the other voice actors and actresses had arrived as well. Around the long conference table, a young woman in a white coat was sitting near the door. She had a pointed face. April failed to recognize her. As she sat down next to her, that woman turned and said, April, I'm surprised you bounced back. I really have underestimated you. April paused shortly, then finally recognized her. Haley, why are you here? I'm dubbing for one of the supporting female roles. Haley looked at her in an unfriendly way. The lead female role was mine. It's all Jennifer's fault. She recommended you and let you get the job. April smiled slightly. It only proves you're not as likable as me. Or, perhaps, you're really not as good as me. You've been voice acting for Jennifer for two years already. 
But she switched to me immediately when we met again. Shouldn't you reflect on yourself? Haley had been her competitor three years ago. April was always in the lead, although Haley felt indignant. Rosaria was still close to her back then. After April left the industry, Haley took her position in the spotlight. When she bumped into Jennifer in California, she stole her resources yet again. Haley probably hated her guts for that. April had a terrible headache when she thought about working together with her this time. I should reflect. Haley thought it was ludicrous. You relied on your dad in the past. Now you rely on your man. You are the reason why Rosaria ended up in this state, aren't you? April raised her voice to her. I nearly forgot. You were good friends with Rosaria. Everyone else in the conference room was looking at them now. Mr. Walls, Simon's project director, said, Miss Haley Wayne, you were good friends with Rosaria Miller? She is a lunatic. You know that, right? No, I'm not familiar with her, Haley said awkwardly. We used to work together and met a couple of times. I can't compare to April's relationship with her. Yeah, she stole my fiancé. I am quite familiar with her, April said sarcastically. Everyone knew that the two had a feud because of Jennifer. The second male lead, Cal Brown, quickly changed the topic. Why isn't Ben Davos here yet? Mr. Walls, are you really going to let Ben dub for the main actor? He isn't even an actor, after all. Although I'm not an actor, I will do my best for this role. A lazy, sexy voice was heard from outside the door. April turned to see a tall, lean man walk into the room. His petite face was framed with ash brown hair. He had thick brows and a sexy pair of lips. He had the bad boy look down. His entrance shushed all the men in the conference room. April had seen him before online and on television. She thought his dreamy looks were only an effect of the camera filters. Looking at him as he stood before her, she realized that he didn't need any filters of any sort. He was born to be in the spotlight. No wonder Winnie was so in love with him. He did look the part. He had a wild charm that was irresistible to women, a wildness that was hard to tame. Was Winnie able to take control of this man with her gentle spirit? April had serious doubts. You're here, Ben. Mr. Walls quickly stood up to shake his hand. They don't know anything. Don't take it to heart. Your fans are thrilled to have you dub this project. Don't say that, Manager Walls. Ben smiled at him. They are the professionals when it comes to voice acting. But I can learn. I hope to learn from all of you, seniors. It's our honor to work with you, Ben. Haley quickly stood up. She looked like she was in love, too. I love listening to your songs, Ben. I've been a huge fan for the longest time. Could I get an autograph? Of course. Ben smiled and looked around the room. He rested his gaze on the seat next to April. He walked over and his assistant quickly pulled the seat for him. He sat down and grinned at April. You must be dubbing for the main actress. Hello. Hi. April nodded. She wondered if he knew that she was good friends with Winnie. Episode 286, The Invisible Troop Manager Wall smiled and said, April's going to dub for quite a few characters in the game, so I'm afraid the time that you two are going to work together will be the longest. Miss Eisenberg, you're so young, but surprisingly capable. Ben complimented her with a smile. April had to admit that he was charming enough to soften any girl's heart when he was smiling. Thankfully, she was immune to handsome guys, as she had spent a lot of time together with Aaron. However, the other girls in the conference room had already been captivated by him. The meeting was mainly about the roles in the game. Dubbing for games was actually more complicated than dubbing for a TV series. If Simon had not been a super large game company in the country, if every single one of their games was not super popular, and if they didn't have such great offers, there wouldn't be so many voice actors and actresses competing over their game. At about 11 o'clock, 
Ben's assistant raised an arm, interrupted the meeting, and said, I'm sorry, Ben has to attend an event at 12, so we have to go now. No problem. Manager Walls hurriedly stood up and said, Please come back at 3 this afternoon. I'm sorry. Ben stood up, unbuttoned his coat with an apologetic look, and then turned to April and said, Miss, can I add you on Instagram so I can ask you some questions about the work? Sure. He and April added each other on Instagram. After Ben left, April sat straight up. As she slightly turned her body, she saw jealousy in the eyes of many voice actresses in the room. The dubbing work lasted until 12 o'clock. After that, some people went to have lunch in the company. April prepared to head back to the hotel to meet Winnie. As she stood up, Haley, who was sitting beside her, stood up as well and blocked her way with a jealous face. If you're jealous of me because Ben has added me on Instagram, I think you're really boring. Excuse me, April said coldly. How could Haley not be jealous of her? If she had the female leading role, Ben would have added her on Instagram. Ben was popular all over Asia. She would even laugh in her dreams if she had the chance to work with him. He was also Prince Charming in many girls' eyes. He was so impeccably handsome. Through working together, they might even grow some special feelings for each other. April, you're just luckier than me. One day, I'll let people know that I, Haley, am as good a voice actress as you are. After saying that, she sneered and left. April rubbed her forehead. Thankfully, she didn't need to work with Haley or she would never have any peace. On her way back to the hotel, April got a message from Ben. Hi, Miss Eisenberg. This is my Instagram account for work. April immediately understood his meaning. Many artists had two Instagram accounts, one for work and one for private life. Their managers and assistants would read most of the messages on their working Instagram. It seemed that Ben was implying that she not say anything that she shouldn't via Instagram. Back in the hotel, Winnie ran to her with excitement, saying, How's it going? Have you seen Ben? I have. I have. Your Ben is so incredibly handsome and charming. Smiling, April showed her his Instagram. I've added him on Instagram. Winnie took her phone and glanced at it and said, So, this is his work Instagram. After saying that, she opened his Instagram moments and started browsing. April sighed. She had seen his Instagram moments on her way back. Almost all his posts were about the events he attended. It was rather boring, but when he seemed to be quite interested in it, it was really easy for someone to become too careful when he or she was in love with another person. After lunch, the two of them headed to Simon together. April started working at two. Winnie had no access to the company, so she waited outside in the lounge. After recording a segment, April hit pause. She took a break and drank some water. It was already 3.20 p.m. She was surprised. She quickly walked over to the assistant director and asked, Where's Ben? Is he here yet? Not yet. The assistant was just playing with his phone and answered her without looking up. Just do your job. Don't count on the superstars to arrive on time. It'll be good enough if they actually finish their part. I'm going to the bathroom. April walked towards the lounge. Winnie was still sitting there looking around anxiously. She had already drunk several cups of tea. Winnie looked at her. You're finished? How could I be? April felt bad for her. Ben said he would come over at three, but... It's normal. Winnie laughed. I was doing a program with a superstar previously... He only arrived after being two hours late. The whole crew was waiting for him. Not all of them do it on purpose, though. Some of them really get caught up in matters. They do have a lot of events to attend. As long as you're fine with it, April sighed. I am. I've waited all these years. A few more hours don't matter to me. Winnie sounded disappointed and down. April was at a loss for what to say. She could wait for someone for years but the worst part would be waiting for someone who wouldn't walk with you for the rest of your life. After April returned to the studio, Winnie waited until 4 o'clock before a group of people emerged from the elevator. Ben was walking at the front. He was wearing a gray t-shirt and a white jacket with jeans. He looked clean and refreshed. They hadn't seen each other in so long. She couldn't even remember how long exactly at that moment. She remembered that his hair was different the last time she saw him. In the past year, he had changed his hairstyle many times. 
He looked even more fashionable and edgy now. The media had described him as a star who could just rely on his good looks, but who had proven himself talented and hardworking as well. Winnie walked out quickly. She didn't dare to walk too close to him. She knew that she wasn't a part of the company. If she walked too close to him, she would be whisked away by his bodyguards, maybe even thrown out of the building. She didn't want to get April in trouble too. She stood a few feet away from him as she watched him quietly. Her eyes were getting wet, but she didn't want to make a scene. Ben caught sight of her as he looked around the room. He looked away casually and paused to bend down to roll up his pants. He paused for half a minute before walking into the studio with a pursed lip. Winnie was stunned as she watched the door close shut. Instead of relieving her longing for him every time she saw him, she felt like she was drifting further from him. When could she ever walk up to him and hold his hand in public? The journey was getting longer and longer for her. At around 10 o'clock at night, April finished up her work and prepared to leave. Suddenly, the assistant director stopped her. April, could you give Ben a hand if you're done? He hasn't got a good feel for voice acting yet. April looked over and nodded. She texted Winnie and walked towards Ben's studio. There wasn't anyone else in the room and it was very quiet. Air conditioning wasn't allowed and beads of sweat were dripping from Ben's forehead. You don't have to do it yourself, April said. It's no easy feat. Yeah, I thought it would be as easy as singing a song. I was too naive, Ben grimaced. But Winnie can only see me if I insist on voice acting myself. April paused briefly. She didn't expect him to have such a plan. I guess Winnie's waiting does mean something. April smiled with relief. She suffered too much bitterness because of me. She left her hometown and went to Rosewood City to fight for the future. An obvious gentleness could be seen in his eyes when he was talking. She mentioned you every time she called me. If it wasn't for you, she might not have been able to sign a contract with a music company. Thank you. It's all right, as long as you won't disappoint her. April thought for a moment, then said, Can you see her tonight? She's been waiting for you out there the whole time. Later, three or four in the morning. I'll sneak out when my assistant falls asleep. Ben thought briefly, then said, You see, that one out there is my assistant. The company made her work for me. Part of her job is to take care of me, and another part is to keep an eye on me. Good. I think Winnie will be happy to know all that. April hurriedly nodded. Let's start dubbing. My assistant will get suspicious if we talk too long. Ben moved his chair closer to the microphone. April started to teach him dubbing line by line. Dubbing for games was easier than dubbing for TV series. But Ben was too poor at voice acting. April worked overtime until 1 o'clock in the morning. She was so tired that she couldn't keep her eyes open on her way back. Thank you. Thank you for working so late with Ben. Winnie fawningly offered her a massage. I didn't do it for him. I did it for you. April pushed away her hands and said, Stop it. You've waited for over 10 hours. You must be tired too. Just rest a little. Later, you need to go out to see him. I'm going then. Are you going to be okay staying here alone? Winnie was a little worried. What could possibly happen? I'm exhausted. I'll go straight to bed and sleep. April yawned. Despite what she just said, she didn't really go straight to sleep. She took a shower, then laid on the bed and checked Instagram moments before going to sleep. She found a new post of CEO Bennett. He had changed his Instagram name from Big A back to CEO Bennett. He posted a picture of New Jersey. Coincidentally, Kira posted a few selfies that she took in New Jersey. Aaron's back could be seen in one of them. Seeing that picture, April couldn't sleep. She was overwhelmed by all sorts of feelings. She understood that Aaron couldn't possibly fall in love with another woman so quickly, but she did not want to see him hanging out with another woman. She really wanted to call him and scold him right now. However, she had broken up with him, and she had said cruel words to him. If she called him now, he might think of her as an unreasonable woman. She felt so annoyed that she couldn't sleep. Winnie left at 3 o'clock. April fell into a shallow sleep at around 4. When she was half asleep, she heard the doorbell. 
She thought that Winnie had come back, so she struggled up to open the door. Opening the door, she saw Aaron standing by the door, wearing a pair of white casual pants and a black sweater. The sweater was slightly loose-fitting, but still couldn't hide the shape of his chest muscles. He looked down at her, eyes glowing dimly. April was stunned. She thought she was in a dream. Just now, she had seen him in her dreams over and over again. At first, she saw him with Jenica, and then she saw him with Kira on their honeymoon. Aaron started talking. He sounded very unhappy. So you dress like this when you see people? He observed the woman in front of him, who was much shorter than he was. She was wearing sky blue cotton pajamas with the first two buttons undone, exposing the tops of her snow white breasts. Episode 287, His Baby Would Be the Prettiest and Cutest. April was brazenly trying to seduce Aaron. No man would be able to resist this temptation. Although her hair was a mess, it didn't dull her natural beauty or sexiness. April was stunned. She looked down at herself and quickly buttoned her pajamas as her ears turned red. She covered herself with her arms in embarrassment. Afterward, she realized that she might still have eye goop in the corners of her eyes. How embarrassing. I... I thought it was Winnie. What are you doing here? How did you know that I was staying here? Her heart was beating fast. She looked like a doe in the headlights. She should have acted coldly towards him, but she couldn't bear to do that after watching him interact with Kiara the day before. They weren't in Rosewood City now anyway. Esma couldn't watch them around the clock. It shouldn't be a problem if I let my guard down just this once, she comforted herself. Aaron stepped forward into the apartment without saying a word. She backed away instinctively. His handsome face looked serious and they walked into the bedroom. He swiftly shut the bedroom door behind him. When the door shut, April jumped a little. She realized that they were alone together again, in a bedroom. What are you doing? April's heartbeat quickened. She was a little nervous, but she wasn't upset. She had been worried the night before that he would change his mind about her, perhaps find Kira a better partner than she was. She didn't expect him to come to look for her tonight. Her heart was racing. No matter how much two people loved each other, no one could truly live without another. She was no exception. She hesitated. Should she just tell him the truth? They could get back together after two more months. April was frustrated. If only she could have gotten pregnant before she broke up with him. Just yourself? Erin glanced at the empty bed next to hers. Yeah, Winnie is off meeting her boyfriend. He suddenly bent down as she spoke. Their faces were inches away. She backed away nervously again. This time, Erin put his arms around her waist before she could withdraw. April was thrust into his chest and they were touching each other eye to eye. April nearly sank into his gaze, but she quickly asked, Does lawyer Kira know about your late night visit? Are you jealous? Aaron looked at her with a steely gaze. His gaze was growing deeper and deeper. April was triggered. She smiled and said, As if I was the one that initiated the breakup. She regretted her words immediately. She almost told him the truth, but she couldn't stop herself from saying spiteful things out of jealousy. You're right. So I thought hard about what happened. I, Aaron, won't allow you to do as you please and toy with my feelings, he said coolly. Look, to date you, my company lost billions of dollars and I lost a very expensive ring in the ocean when I proposed to you. These are devastating losses. April was baffled. Are you going to make me pay up? It's good that you know what you have to do, Aaron smiled. April did some mental calculations. That was billions of dollars they were talking about. She would never be able to pay him back. I don't think that's my responsibility. You were the one who chose to date me. I'm sorry that you had to lose billions of dollars, but it doesn't make sense for me to compensate you. As for the ring, you dropped it yourself. I didn't even get to see it at all. Breaking up with you has really allowed me to see your moral quality. 
Aaron said with a cold face. My company lost over a hundred million because there was an issue between you and Isaac. He hired an internet water army to attack me. As for that ring, we lost it and I was going to dive down to find it for you. You didn't let me, so I asked the divers to look for it. I'm way more capable than them. If I went down, I could have certainly found it. Don't you think you should be responsible for that? April was completely speechless. It was impressive that he could actually pass the buck to her like that. He was so unreasonable. Breaking up allowed him to see her moral quality. She saw his moral quality too. Even if you take me to court, the judge will find you wrong, said April impatiently. Aaron snorted. I'm powerful and rich, so I get to decide if I'm right or wrong. Now let's talk about what I did for your father's case. I pulled many strings. I searched in the country, then abroad, then in the country again. I hired Kira's entire law firm and spent at least five million on that. Also, I punished Isaac for you. In order to do that, I spent over a hundred million. I've also pulled strings to ban all the films that his company made and I purchased that crappy film and television company. April clenched her teeth and responded, In the long term, that film and television company will do you no harm at all. It'll only bring you profit. It hasn't made me a penny so far. I've been losing money on it, said Aaron blandly. If you think it's so nice, how about I sell it to you and you pay me the money? April didn't know what to say. How could she possibly afford that? She rolled her eyes and said to him, Tell me, what exactly do you want? Pay me back. Aaron took out a file from his trousers pocket and said, Give me a child, and then all your debts will be cleared. April was dumbfounded. She had been thinking about having a baby just now. She intended to use the baby to keep him from leaving her, but now he brought himself to her. What a coincidence. I've dedicated so much to you. It's reasonable for me to ask for a child. Aaron glanced at her coldly. Besides, you know about my illness. I want you to bear me a child just in case. That way I won't end up childless even if I can't recover. Also, I might get back together with Jenica. She's infertile, isn't she? So I should make sufficient preparations. Even though April figured out that he probably said that only to make her angry, she still felt annoyed. Aren't you with Kira? Why are you getting back with Jenica? Aaron gave her a bland glance and said, People's feelings change constantly. Like you and me. A second ago, you loved me so deeply, but in the next second, you told me that you never loved me. Kira's not bad, but only Jenica is like the pure moonlight in my heart. April sneered with anger. She had no idea that Jenica was the pure moonlight in his heart. What was she then? The dark cloud which covered the moonlight? I'm afraid your mom won't let you be with your pure moonlight. April said through clenched teeth. That's my future business. You don't need to worry about it, said Aaron carelessly. I've also given you my first time. I've suffered all the losses in this relationship. April felt both ashamed and angry. I gave you mine too, didn't I? How much are you worth? And how much am I worth? There's a difference between the level of preciousness of my first time and yours. Not to mention the fact that you won't be able to find another 29-year-old high-level virgin guy. Aaron snorted coldly. He was the one who was embarrassed to admit that he was still a virgin. He was completely shameless now. April nearly vomited blood. She forgot to cover her breast in her moment of rage. Yeah, you should think me then, a virgin at 29 years old. You'd only stay a virgin if not for me. Oh right, I forgot. You only get hard for me. I'm the only one who allowed you to experience what it's like to be a man. Aaron was quiet for three seconds before he retorted. You're right, but I've made you very happy too, haven't I? Every time I come, you come four or five times in return. I have the short end of the stick. You. April was glaring at him with rage, her chest rising and falling with her breath. She wanted to bite him out of anger. How could she have trouble sleeping out of her longing for him? How silly of her. Aaron was admiring the sight in front of him. You agree that I'm right, don't you? Now sign the papers. You are being despicable and shameless. April bit the bottom of her lip. Her eyes were filled with rage, but it was sparkling and lively. 
It would tempt any man, especially with her thin clothes barely covering her body. Erin, who had been deprived of pleasures, had the sudden urge to pin her down on the bed. I'm trying to reason with you. I have evidence and reason on my side. If you're not willing, I'll have to see you in court then. Erin bent down and looked her in the eye. You know how much you'll have to pay me then. April looked up at him. Their gazes interlocked. She was suddenly calm, her anger appeased. Although he didn't say it, she knew that he hadn't truly let her go. He didn't need to do this with his status and wealth. She was angry that he would use this lowly method, but it was a chance for them to ease their relationship. She always knew what kind of person he was. She wanted a child anyway. They would surely get back together with a child in the picture. I can agree to your terms, but you have to promise me that you'll still keep your distance. You can't use it as an excuse to come look for me every day. We can meet for those days that I'm fertile. Only you and I can know about this. No one else. April thought that it worked well for her. She didn't need to tell him the truth and she didn't need to worry about him running away. She had wanted to tell him the truth at the beginning, but he had to proclaim Jenica as his moon. She would let him love his moon then. When she got pregnant and gave him a cold shoulder, he would surely come running back to her. Of course. I only want the child, not you. We should make the boundaries clear. Aaron grinned. He knew exactly what she was planning. She didn't want Esma to know that they still maintained contact. Although Esma had arranged for people to spy on them, he had bought all of them. He would tell her the truth when she became pregnant and when he became a dad. If she knew about it now, he would have to wait a long time before he could be a father. He just wanted a cute baby girl. He would bring her along and show her off to Richard and make him jealous. His baby would be the prettiest and cutest. Of course, if it was a boy, they would keep trying. Episode 288 Did you wait outside the whole night? He didn't want boys. Why would he have a son? A son would only make him unhappy and angry. He believed that sons and fathers were previous life enemies. Hmm, I don't think that I really like you. April was so frustrated that she even wanted to die. She finally could understand why David and Caitlin disliked their son so much sometimes. At that very moment, she wanted to bite him to death. She would have let him wait and let him beg for her to come back to him. I've told you that the person I like is Ryan. I got close to you simply to make use of you, she said. Aaron responded wrathfully. I wouldn't have a baby with you if my body could react to another woman. I see. That makes two of us, April replied with no mercy. They stared at each other for a short while, then Aaron threw the file on the table and said, Since we've made an agreement, sign your name on it. How do I know if you'll go back on your word or not? At this subsidiary agreement that I mentioned before, April pointed at an empty area on the paper and said, I'll only have sex with you during my ovulatory period, not any other days. Hearing that, Erin gave her a meaningful glance, then said, In fact, I can accept test tubes. But if you insist on doing it through sexual intercourse, I'm okay with it. The tips of April's ears even turned red. You just said that you want to have a baby with me because your body only reacts to me. Didn't you mean that we'll get pregnant by having sex? Aaron raised his eyebrows, chuckled, and said, You're a woman. How can you say it so straightforwardly? You see, even I didn't use those straightforward words. I'm sorry. I found that I don't need to avoid those words when I'm talking to you. No matter how straightforward I am, I can't be as shameless as you are. April took a breath. She felt that she could even watch porn together with him and stay perfectly calm now. Aaron didn't respond, but turned and found a pen from a cabinet, then added a term on the contract. Look, is this good enough? He asked. You didn't mention that we'll only have sex during my ovulatory period, April pointed out. In fact, having sex during the ovulatory period will only raise the chance of getting pregnant. If you want to get pregnant, you may even get pregnant during your safe period. Aaron said, Google it if you don't believe me. April laughed. Do you want to have sex with me anytime you want? In your dreams. 
If you're not satisfied, don't have a baby with me. If you want me to give you the money, I can only tell you that I have nothing to give you but my own life. Actually, she would have considered his suggestion if he hadn't said so many awful things to make her angry just now. However, he had made her really angry. All right. Aaron fixed his eyes on her body for a few seconds with slight discontent, then lowered his head to sign the contract. April took the contract, glanced at it, then signed her own name as well. April put the contract in his pocket, then took off his sweater, showing his perfect body shape. What are you doing? April was confused. Making a baby. Aaron started to remove his belt. April gave a start. I just put it down in black and white. I'm not in the ovulatory period now. Aaron took out his phone, opened the app, pointed at it, and said, The app on my phone says that you are. I'm sorry. My app shows I'm in my safe period. April opened her own app. Aaron frowned and said, What app is this? It's wrong. Just uninstall it. April frowned. This is the most popular period application among girls. Why would you know more about these applications than us? I'm the one with the period anyway, not you. I am the one keying in the data. We've been broken up for a while now. How would you know when I had my last period? Erin pondered what she said. She made a fair point. I'll record your data again. Tell me, when was the last time you had your period? It hasn't come at all. April was dejected when she mentioned it. All this while? Your period is seriously delayed. You should run a check at the hospital. If her period wasn't regular, it would affect the effectiveness of their baby making. It's probably because I stayed up too late for a while. April frowned. It happened before when I worked too hard and didn't get enough sleep. Erin agreed with her. She slept an average of five hours every day when she was working. It must have been hard on her body. Are you going to stay up every night in New Jersey? I don't mean to nag you, but your job is too taxing. If your period doesn't come regularly, it'll be difficult to get pregnant. I'll get Dr. Henry to fill your pulse and prescribe you some medicine to help your body recuperate when we get back. He had to get her pregnant within three months. If not, she might not adhere to their agreement afterward. What's the hurry? April was baffled. I have to treat it seriously. You know, at the rate you're abusing your body, you might end up infertile, Aaron said unceremoniously. You should look after your body while you're young. April pouted. She wasn't someone who wasted her body because she was young. She did want to have children in the future. Fine, but it has to be done secretly. I don't want people to find out that I'm trying to get pregnant. Don't worry. Aaron put on his cardigan begrudgingly. I'll get going since we can't do it today. He was only there to make babies with her? He didn't miss her at all? April was miffed. What? You can't bear to see me go? Aaron looked back at her. April said harshly, Scram. I won't go then. He sat on her bed. April bent down and looked at him. Mr. Bennett, I'm afraid you will have to sit somewhere else. I'm not fertile right now. I can't make babies for you. Aaron grinned. Fine then. I'll leave now. I have to climb the Great Wall with Kiara. April smiled, disappeared instantly. I hope you fall off the Great Wall and break your legs, she thought to herself. Goodbye. Aaron waved and walked out the door before he added, Oh, right. How long are you staying in New Jersey for? One week. All right, I'll ask Dr. Henry to come over in the next few days. April was speechless. There's no rush. Your period has been delayed for over 20 days. Don't try to argue with me. Aaron wanted to nag her more, but he didn't want to show too much concern. So he held it in. I'm only doing this for my baby. He shut the door and left after saying his piece. April laid in bed again after he left. She felt like she was in a dream. She couldn't believe that she just signed a contract to have Aaron's babies. She didn't know if she should laugh or cry. It was good, though. She didn't need to worry that some other woman might steal him. She would have his child, so he would have to be responsible for her and listen to her. She had so many thoughts in her head. When she was falling asleep, the doorbell could be heard again. Once again, she struggled back up to answer the door. This time, it was Winnie. Her black, shiny hair hung loosely over her shoulders. She had stayed up the whole night, so now she looked tired and sallow. You're back! Did you have fun with Ben Davos last night? We haven't seen each other in a long time, so I guess you have a lot to say to each other. April was honestly happy for her. Winnie pressed her slightly pale lips together and dropped her eyelids. 
Her eyelashes shook slightly as she forced a faint smile and responded, He didn't show up last night. April was astonished. So you waited outside the whole night? Yeah. The smile on Winnie's face was bitter and her eyes were red and misty. April felt both sad and angry. Yesterday, Ben Davos said so many nice words that that she was even touched. She felt that it was such a miserable thing for them to love each other without being able to be together. Early in the morning, she watched Winnie change her outfit a few times and dress herself up very carefully before leaving the hotel. She wanted to leave a good impression on the person that she loved, but that person let her wait outside for a couple of hours. It was April. People could wear summer clothes in Rosewood City starting a long while ago, but in New Jersey, the temperature difference between the daytime and the nighttime was still huge. April held her hands and said, Why didn't you come back early? You're wearing so little. It's cold out there. Her hands were always cold, and now those hands were like blocks of ice. You have to work today. I worried that I might disturb your sleep if I came back earlier. Exhausted, Winnie kicked off her shoes, crawled under the quilt, and buried her face in a pillow. April sat by her side and looked at her slightly shaking shoulders. They had lived together for over a year. Winnie was always gentle and mild. April hadn't seen her crying, but she knew that she only cried on the inside. She had left her hometown for the man that she loved and chose the most difficult way to go. A girl like that would not let herself cry unless she was really, really sad. Still, she didn't let April see her cry. She turned her back to her. Therefore, April had no choice but to wait for her to stop crying and wipe away her tears. Perhaps she and Winnie were the same kind of person. They didn't like others to see them crying. As her shoulders stopped shaking, Winnie turned around. Her eyes were misty, and one corner of the pillow was slightly damp. I don't blame him, Winnie managed to smile and said. He said that his company provisionally arranged for him to take part in a foreign show so he couldn't come out. He told me to go back early. Why didn't he tell you that before you left the hotel last night? April was angry. How could he do that? Farron did the same to her. She would be so pissed off that she would punish him so hard. Aaron could be evil and sharp-tongued sometimes, but he would never let her be starved and frozen. Winnie sighed and responded, He said it's an urgent arrangement. When he was preparing to come out, his manager suddenly showed up. I've looked up the show online. He didn't lie. April fell into silence. Perhaps that was the reason why many stars used their busy jobs as an excuse when they broke up with their partners. You can see him tonight. He won't leave right away, said April. No. Tonight, after finishing the show, he'll fly to California to take pictures for a magazine cover and then fly back tomorrow at noon. Big stars are always so busy. Winnie shook her head. I plan to go back to Rosewood City this afternoon. Episode 289 Erin paced in front of her door. It's good for you to go back. She was either waiting for him at the company or in front of the hotel. April used to wait for Isaac beneath Magma Group as well. Waiting for someone was a long, tiresome affair. April couldn't bear to watch Winnie like this. She regretted asking her along on this trip. I think I'll focus on my album. Maybe if I don't make it, I won't even qualify to meet him again. Winnie was worn out. She had never felt this exhausted in her life before as she slowly closed her eyes. April pulled the duvet covers over her, looking worried. In the afternoon, after having lunch with Winnie, she took her to the train station. At the train station, she said, Winnie, call me when you reach Rosewood City safely. All right, don't take me further. Go back to Simon. Don't be late, Winnie said as she boarded the train. April watched her disappear before heading back to the company. When she entered the studio, she didn't leave until 6 o'clock in the evening for dinner. A voice actor's dinner is simple, three dishes and rice. That day she had boiled tofu, boiled pork ribs, and winter melon. After a while, Ben Davos's assistant walked in with a large bento box. When he walked out of the studio, his assistant uncovered the box. Cal Brown whispered to her on the side. Fuck, look at what he's eating. Superstars get treated so differently from us, even his dinner is ten times better than ours. Are you sure it's only ten times? April laughed and shook her head. Look at his bento. It's from the most famous restaurant. The minimum spending there is $3,000. 
Cal Brown glanced at his food and said through gritted teeth, He's just good looking and has a couple of good songs. His voice acting is garbage. This industry is so unfair. Voice actors don't get much at all. It's so different in Japan. Voice actors over there are practically celebrities on their own. There are many things that could be improved in our country's media industry. Forget about it. April sighed. Cal pouted and continued. You haven't heard, have you? Ben only walked into the studio at 5 o'clock today. You're going to have to stay till past midnight with him again. Don't say yes anymore. He's going to earn millions for just a few hours of his time, but you will be teaching him the skills for nothing at all. April didn't want to say anything. They had made an arrangement that they would start at 3. Forget yesterday. How could he be late again today? Ben walked out of the studio and his assistant handed over the bento box. He walked over to April and said, Let's eat together. There's so much food, I can't finish it all. It's all right. I'm nearly done. April smiled and quickened her pace. Ben looked at her silently before picking out a few pieces of sushi and prawns and putting them into her bowl. He also proceeded to share his food with Cal. Cal's expression softened. The assistant walked over and spoke to Ben Davis while maintaining a smile on her face. Although no one else could understand what they were saying, April did. She always had an exceptional gift with languages. The assistant was asking him why he bothered sharing his food with them when they were just ordinary voice actors. She was telling him that he didn't need to lower his own standards to befriend them. Ben Davos told her that April needed to teach him voice acting that night. After dinner, people returned to their own studios. At 11 o'clock at night, when April prepared to leave, the assistant director asked her to stay and help Ben Davos again. She didn't want to, but still, she walked into that studio as she had something to say to him. Seeing her come in, Ben asked her in a low voice, Where's Winnie? Why didn't I see her today? She went back to Rosewood City. April gave a fake smile and said sarcastically, She has no reason to stay here. All she can do in this place is wait. I'm sorry. Ben Davos lowered his beautiful eyes and responded, I really wanted to see her, but there was a situation last night. April sighed quietly. This man could really break women's hearts when he apologized. However, she had never been a fan of any star, and added to the fact that she now had a bad impression of him, she honestly could not accept his apology. Yeah, because of your situation, Winnie stayed outside the hotel the whole night. She waited a couple of hours for you. It was only 8 degrees last night and she's afraid of cold weather the most. But still, she waited for you outside wearing a thin coat. In order to come here to see you, she turned down all the events that her company arranged for her and dropped all her classes in school. She came here without hesitation. April sneered and continued, Ben, I know that you're a popular singer, that you're famous all over Asia, but you're so popular that all the other people want to kiss your feet. But I only see that you hurt my friend. She's been making sacrifices for you. What have you ever sacrificed for her? An annoyed look flashed across Ben's gorgeous face as he replied, I've promised her that I'll make our relationship public in just a few years. I'll be responsible for her and I'll marry her. I'm only 23 years old now. If I told our relationship to the public now, my career would be affected. It would be bad for her future career too. No one asked you to do that, said April aggressively. I can understand that you had an unexpected situation, but the one who waited outside for you was sad. You stood her up, but expect this to end with sorry from you. Have you thought about ordering her some food online? And that way she would at least feel a slight warmth. Pardon me for speaking frankly. But nowadays you can order food and flowers online any time you want. Those online stores take orders any time. If you wanted, all you needed to do was tap your phone screen for a few times. It wouldn't leak your personal information. I've been friends with Winnie for quite a long time, but I haven't seen you give her one single gift. Does your assistant have her eyes on your phone 24 hours a day? Miss Eisenberg, you're going a little too far on this. Ben finally couldn't help but frown. His voice sounded slightly unhappy. Winnie and I have known each other since high school. You've only known her for about a year. I'm grateful that she has had a friend like you during the past year, but after all, this is our business. We have our own way of maintaining this relationship. 
I'm a star, so I can't do whatever I want. In the last half year, my time for sleep was never more than six hours. I am doing high intensity work. About our relationship, I'm my oh Winnie everything, but you have no right to tell me what to do. You're right. I'm just a voice actor and I'm not qualified to talk to a superstar. I should be thankful and honored to be speaking to a star like you. But I'm speaking to you today as Winnie's good friend. April mocked him angrily. Ben looked up at her for a while and said suddenly, Miss Eisenberg, the reason why you're so angry today is because I refused to help you when Winnie asked me to, right? Because I said no when she asked me to help you secure the lead role. April was stunned. She might have had an all right impression of Ben Davos before this. Now that impression was completely tarnished. I hope when he explained to you it wasn't appropriate for me to step in. Ben Davos said matter-of-factly, Didn't you land the role anyway with your own capabilities? You are really unbelievable. April couldn't stand being in the same room with him for a minute longer. I can't teach you voice acting. You should look for someone else. April turned to leave. Ben's assistant approached her and said in broken Mandarin, Why did you come out? We have a gap in our understanding of his character. I won't be able to teach him, April said and walked towards the exit. I think you were chased out because you had other motives talking to Ben Davos, not because you can't teach him, the assistant suddenly said. I saw the two of you conversing the whole time behind the glass window. Although I couldn't make out what the two of you were saying, I could tell that he was getting upset. I've seen many staff members like you. Are you trying to gain his attention? We won't be asking for your help anymore. Please stay away from him from now on. <laughs> April laughed. Incredulous. She had seen all sorts of people in the industry, but never had she met anyone so obnoxious as this assistant. Rest assured, I don't want to interact with this crappy team anyway. You guys are always late for the sessions, and you expect me to stay till one or two in the morning. I don't need this in my life. She walked away after saying her piece. The assistant looked enraged. They turned around and said to the director's assistant, If we knew that you hired voice actors like her, we wouldn't have agreed to join this project. Who does she think she is? She's just a voice actress. Ben Davos is the Prince of Asia. This is only day two. You better swap her out or we won't cooperate with the rest of the production. Don't be angry. The director's assistant chuckled and handed over a cigarette. If we find someone new, we would have wasted two days. How much does it cost to find someone new? The assistant said unceremoniously. You do as you deem fit. David, don't make things hard for all of us. Ben suddenly appeared behind them and said, We plan to concentrate on the market over here this year. I don't want to have a bad reputation here. But drop it. Ben Davis turned and walked into the studio. He wasn't trying to help April, but he was worried that she would say bad things about him to Winnie if her role was stripped. He was seriously concerned as to whether she would sow discord between him and Winnie. April was infuriated after her encounter with Ben and his assistant. She decided to buy supper to vent her frustrations. She brought a bowl of ramen, lamb and beef skewers, squid strips, and grilled squid back to her hotel. When she arrived at her floor, she looked down to search for her room key. When she looked up, she saw Aaron pacing around in front of her door. Episode 290, You Tried to Seduce Him at Work? This morning, Aaron made April angry. And at night, she was angry with Ben. She got angry when seeing any man now. She felt that men were the most annoying creatures in the world. All Aaron thought about was visiting New Jersey with another woman, and he used work as an excuse. When she saw Aaron, he saw her too. He also saw the food boxes she carried, about five of them. He remembered that Winnie had gone home earlier today, so that food was probably for just April. He knew that his woman had a greater appetite than other women. When she walked closer, Aaron saw the kebab that stuck out of the plastic bag in her hand. Then he couldn't help but knit his brows. You're gonna have a baby and your period is over half a month late. Yet still, you do know how to take care of yourself. All this is is junk food. He said, April felt so annoyed. Aren't you having fun with Kiera? She asked. Aaron guessed that April was jealous. 
He wanted her to be jealous so she wouldn't dare to irritate him with Ryan again. What are you doing here? April asked. Did you bring Dr. Henry here? I'm here to tell you that Dr. Henry is out of town for an exchange meeting. He'll be back in Rosewood City in a couple of days. I think he'll be there when you get back home. While speaking, Aaron fixed his eyes on her pretty face. He surely wouldn't tell her that he came here because he missed her so much. April felt speechless. Do you have to come here to tell me all about that? Why didn't you call? Aaron snorted coldly and said, I deleted your number long ago. You think I'd keep your number after what you did to me? You could have messaged me on WhatsApp then. April replied, I've dragged you into my blacklist. Can't you drag me out? How? I don't know how. I never disliked a person so much that I had to drag him or her into the blacklist. You were the first one, said Aaron expressionlessly. I didn't want to ask Marvin and the others about it. After all, they all think that we've broken off our relationship. His shameless words made April so angry that she even laughed. You know how to drag people into the blacklist, but don't know how to drag people out. Who would believe that? She thought. She took out the card key, opened the door, and said, All right, I already know that Dr. Henry won't come here. You can leave now. I'm hungry. Give me some of your food. Aaron pushed the door open and walked straight in. April didn't know what to say. Will he leave after he has some food? She wondered. She admitted that she had been missing him a lot lately. However, he said that Jenica was like the pure moonlight in his heart, and that made her very unhappy. For that reason, she wanted him to suffer more. Why are you standing at the door? Hurry up and take out the food. Aaron took a plastic bag out of her hand, opened it, and took out a skewer of beef, finishing it in two bites. It tasted awful, he said with dislike. Then he picked up another skewer and continued eating. April had only bought five skewers of grilled beef, and he finished four of them in one breath. Why did you eat so much if it's not good? She was beyond endurance. I'm too hungry. Why? Didn't your Kiera have a good meal with you? Could she be like you? She eats in small bites as she doesn't want to get fat. Unlike her, you eat as much as four adult males. Erin opened her noodles while speaking. April rubbed her forehead. She suddenly felt that Ben was actually quite nice. Even though he never ordered food for Winnie, he never ate Winnie's food either. Unlike him, Aaron was... She let him eat and went to shower. Halfway through her shower, Aaron called from outside. I'm leaving! April was astonished. The bathroom door in the hotel had no lock, so she was originally worried that he would walk in uninvited. She was really sleepy. She wanted to go to bed after she showered, but she thought he would find an excuse to stay with her. She didn't expect him to leave so soon. Did he really not have any feelings for her anymore? He was acting so properly in front of her now. April was vexed as she dried and dressed. April was already feeling down. When she saw that there was only squid strips left on the table, she nearly vomited blood. She was furious. She had bought so much food, and all he left her were some strips of squid. How inconsiderate. She was starving. Did Aaron come over just to take revenge on her? She didn't know how long it would take for delivery services to reach her if she ordered food online now. Forget about it, she thought to herself. She was going to bear with her hunger and go to bed. After lying in bed for a while, the doorbell rang. She looked through the peephole to see a delivery man standing outside. When she opened the door, he said, Hello, miss. This is your bird's nest and moose cake. April was stunned. I didn't order this. I'm not sure about that. This is the correct address, the delivery man said. You are Miss Eisenberg? April nodded. It's correct, then. You're so pretty. Might be from an admirer. The man handed the food to her and left promptly. April shut the door behind her and opened the package. The bird's nest was contained in an elaborate porcelain bowl. The cake was pink heart-shaped moose cake that was 13 inches across. It was delicately made and it made her happy. It would make anyone happy. After a while, she dialed Aaron's number. What? A cold and hard voice answered the phone. I should be asking you that. Did you send the cake? April was nervous. She was also a little hopeful. Were you hoping it was Ryan? Of course it was me, Aaron said sarcastically. April bit her lip and she tried hard not to smile too widely. Do you know what cake you sent? It's heart-shaped. What? 
Aaron sounded surprised over the line. I was just worried that you would be too hungry to bear me a child. I told the shop to send any cake over. I didn't know they would send you a heart-shaped one. That's ridiculous. She found the situation ridiculous. Since you already received it, I can't do anything about it. I'll give them feedback not to be so careless in the future. Aaron hung up after that. April looked at her phone and looked over at the cake again. She couldn't help but smile. She had misunderstood him earlier. Now she couldn't bear to dig into such an exquisite cake. After a long debate with herself, she finally decided to succumb to the cake's temptation, and she stuck her spoon into the cake. It was smooth and velvety. She had plenty of cake in the past, but it was nothing compared to this. Out of curiosity, she looked up the bakery on the cake box online. She was shocked to find that the cake cost $12,800. That bastard, a random cake cost him over $10,000. April smiled to herself as she ate the cake. She was planning to eat half of the cake, but now she was determined to finish the entire thing. She didn't want to let his good intentions go to waste. After she had her fill, she laid in bed, satisfied. She decided that she was going to bear that bastard Aaron a child as soon as possible. He treated her so well, even when they broke up. He was definitely a keeper. The next day, when April was lying on her bed and looking at her phone, she got a call from the director of Team Simon. Miss Eisenberg, I'm sorry, but I have to let you know that your work schedule has been moved to the middle of next month. Why? April asked with surprise. The director replied impatiently. How can you be so shameless enough to ask why? Don't you know who you've offended? Ben Davos is a superstar and you actually tried to seduce him at work. If we had known that the voice actress Jennifer had recommended was so unprofessional, we wouldn't have picked you. However, as you've already worked for two days and you're pretty good, we've only moved your schedule to the middle of next month so you don't have to work together with Ben. April understood why and got so angry. Yesterday, she did worry that she might offend Ben. However, she also felt that he wouldn't be so narrow-minded because he was Winnie's boyfriend after all. But to her surprise... When did I seduce him? Director, I can't even confront him about it. I didn't do it. I just didn't. April felt humiliated. You're a voice actress and he is a superstar. How dare you demand to confront him? The director sounded very unfriendly. Ben is a superstar. Does he have a reason to frame you? I didn't do it. And you can't act like this. You told me that I'm working at the end of this month. So I've asked my school for leave and I've flown here. Now you're telling me that I need to come back next month? Aren't you jerking me around? We're in this business, so we need to follow the rules of this business. You're right. We voice actresses are insignificant, but please respect us. April made an utmost effort to fight for her rights. If you think it's inappropriate, feel free to do whatever you want. But you've already signed the contract, so if you quit, we won't cover your expenses and you'll need to compensate for our losses. After all, if you quit, the past two days that we've spent on you would be wasted. April was infuriated. Some other companies had deducted her wages before when she worked for them. However, she had never been accused of seduction. The Simon people had taken the liberty of changing her schedule because their company was big and rich. She had to finish her work because otherwise she would need to pay them for their losses. That was so shameless. The most shameless one was Ben. She had had a good impression of him at first because he was incredibly handsome. However, he actually made up lies about her behind her back. The more she thought about it, the more uncomfortable she felt. She found Winnie's number as she really wanted to call her, but still, she didn't do it. Winnie had already been in a very bad mood yesterday. If she complained about Ben to her, she would feel embarrassed. She might even get sadder. Besides, Winnie and Ben had known each other since high school while she only had known her for about a year. Perhaps Winnie would tend to believe Ben more. April dropped her phone. At three o'clock in the afternoon, April headed straight to the studio at Simon. When she arrived, she saw Cal and Haley talking by the door. Seeing her, Cal gave her a glance with pity, then pushed the door open and walked into the studio. Haley turned back, smiled at her and said, April, what are you doing here? As far as I know, your schedule's been changed, right? April narrowed her eyes and said, They switched my schedule with yours? Didn't you know? 
said Haley scornfully. That's because you tried to seduce Ben. I don't like your kind of people the most. You always pretend to be so virtuous. But in private, you do things like that. From this day on, I'll be teaching Ben voice acting. <laughs>